and welcome back to Automotive Tales. So the Peugeot 207 has gone and I have made another slightly questionable life choice. Um, so today I am channeling my inner 80s. I've got the aviators with the gold rims and I'm in the ultimate 80s pinup, a Porsche 944. Really get any more 80s than that does it so what is it to tell you about this car well i have bought a 1988 porsche 944 2.7 so it's a 2.7 liter four cylinder not six cylinder like most porsches or even eight cylinders like its 928 brethren um, but it still has a gearbox hanging out the back as with almost every porsche that's ever been built uh, and it's in true 80s style because it's got pinstripe seats as you can probably see behind me here this one doesn't have leathers it was factory fitted with a I don't know what you call this fabric but um, it's a dark blue fabric with a nice grey pinstripe I kind of feel like I need to crack out a uh, three-piece suit all of a sudden so she's got 163,000 miles on the clock and she's all right for her age she has a few bumps and scrapes and things that need sorting but at six thousand pounds this is a real entry-level Porsche and so far so good we've got good oil pressure we've got charging uh, it's not coming up to temperature so I suspect it's had a thermostat removed at some point um, and it's been sat for a while so it doesn't run all that well I'm gonna go and put some fresh fuel in it now and see if that helps clear its throat a little bit if not we'll maybe do a cheeky service then get it out for a proper test drive right to the petrol pump so you join me shortly after filling up with fuel. I've put 30 pounds in, which has given me a quarter of a tank, which is a little bit terrifying. Um, but I've had the chance now, it's slowly going dark, to try the most important bit about the whole car. Pop-up headlights. So you join me back in the 944. I have been living with this car now for a couple of weeks. I've put a good few hundred miles on it. I've done at least one decent road trip in it uh, out into the peaks in Derby and it's performed really quite impeccably. Um, I have picked up a few little niggles that are gonna need addressing, but on the whole, it seems a fairly together car. Uh, unfortunately, today I'm not sporting the uh, 80 shades because despite a couple of weeks of good weather, uh, on this very evening, the first evening of a local Porsche meet for the entire year, it's decided to rain because weather. So uh, I'm taking it for a drive to meet some other Porsche enthusiasts in the hope to, well, display the car, look at some other pretty metal, but also question people probably more experienced than me in Porsche ownership, specifically 944 ownership. So hopefully get some hints and tips on the right places to go for parts and repairs, um, and also things to look out for and how we can improve this car and things that are wrong with it maybe that I haven't noticed yet. So it's always good to uh, join your local car club and learn from people that have been doing it for maybe for longer than you have especially if like me you are new to a specific model of car so what have i found with the car in the few weeks i've owned it well the first thing i did was fish through the history of the car and found it has a staggering amount of service history right from the very first owner with a, a fully up-to-date and stamped service book for at least i think it's about 10 maybe 12 years of ownership uh, then it's gone into specialists um, and there is a full series of receipts. You can almost count every six months where it's been in for something, be it small minor repairs, uh, smaller servicing or a full service package. And that includes fairly recently, uh, it's been in for a cam belt, and auxiliary belt and an engine service. So in terms of the maintenance and service items, the car is pretty much up to scratch, which is great news. That gives me time to drive and enjoy the car without worrying about anything like that failing and to get used to it and learn its foibles and what things I might need to fix. So I already know there's a little bit of bodywork needs doing. The very bottom of the wings is just starting to bubble and the rear valance which connects to, or the rear skirt that connects to the rear uh, valance uh, at the very lower end of the bodywork is looking like it's coming away slightly. I think there's some corrosion behind there needs addressing. It's fairly standard for 80s cars that have plastic bodywork panels. Everything underneath it just rots away. 
so hopefully we can get that addressed fairly soon uh, you'll have seen if I've put in any pictures of the outside of the car it has wheels from a Porsche 986 a Boxster an early one um, which are a 16 inch wheel I think possibly 17 that's not what this car should have it should have 15 inch Porsche teledial wheels uh, so we're going to try and hunt a set of those unfortunately though this car has had brand new tyres fitted to those boxed wheels. So maybe we can make use of those wheels on the 986 we've got, which I'm fairly sure now it's been sat for three years, it's gonna need some new tyres. Uh, what are the things? I have noticed that the power steering pump squeals ever so slightly on a hot start for about half a second when you first turn the car over. So that's going to need some investigation. Uh, I suspect a refurbished pump is all that's going to be needed. Uh, we also have a dash clock which has failed, appears to be fairly standard with the 944, there is already a repair part in the post, uh, they're on the shelf at most Porsche parts specialists. Uh, what else to notice? I have noticed a bit of grumbling from the rear end of the vehicle. Now, the diff and gearbox all feel very tight, um, so my suspicion is it's the drive shaft. After first hearing the noise, I had a bit of a fish round underneath the back of the car and noticed there's quite a lot of play in the CV joints on the drive shafts. Uh, suspecting they're probably original to the car, so having done 160 odd thousand miles, I think we can give them their fair dues uh, and maybe look to replace those. Uh, I've had a look around and it would appear that you can get refurbished parts from reputable parts, uh, Porsche parts specialists. That's going to be a real mouthful to keep on top of. Porsche parts, bleh, Porsche parts specialists. And um, luckily, because this is a late model 944, it has what are called low bro shafts. So these are shafts that are attached to the diff uh, via a flange and to the hub via a flange, which is great because unlike the Rolls-Royce Silver Spirit we've got, it means you don't have to pull the whole hubs apart and drop the diff out to get them out of the way. It means you can unbolt them with the car in the air, uh, and the car still on its wheels, so you can do it in a pit or on a ramp, um, and drop them out and drop them back in without any problems. So hopefully that'll be a nice easy job I can do myself. So next, it's time to get up to the car meet and go meet some like-minded Porsche people. Let's just hope the weather stays reasonable for us.